happened here? And now we are, we are stuck with this reality of Trump and Pence and the rising sort of overt nature of their fascist uh, administration, in part because of who the Democrats are, because of what the Democratic Party stands for. The U.S. has a tradition, uh, and, it, and it's, it, it requires a, a waiver if someone who has been in a senior position in the military is going to be appointed uh, to oversee a, a, a civilian uh, agency uh, or a, a military agency, and they're going to be the civilian in charge of it. But Trump is appointing general after general after general to top posts. Lieutenant General Mike Flynn, who is his national security advisor, who, by the way, does not need to be confirmed by the Senate. Lieutenant General Mike Flynn was General Stanley McChrystal's top deputy when McChrystal was the head of the elite assassination force, the Joint Special Operations Command. He was the guy that drew up the plans for the United States to, and as they put it, kill their way through uh, Iraq and Afghanistan. This is a force that has uh, been totally unaccountable and empowered further under the Obama administration. He also is a radical uh, Islamophobe who truly does believe that Islam as a religion needs to be destroyed, not just uh, people who conduct terrorist attacks and say they're doing it in the name of Islam. He wants the religion wiped out. General James Mattis, who led the siege of Fallujah uh, when he was a commander on the ground in Iraq, he's the one that intervened and got the guys who did the Haditha massacre off the hook. He said sometimes it's just fun to shoot people, talking about uh, killing people uh, in Afghanistan, who he said, oh, they're these people uh, beat women and make them wear uh, burqas. Now, I'm against beating women, and the burqa issue is a complicated one if we, wanted, if we want to actually have a discussion on that. But last time I checked, the U.S. does not give the death penalty to people who beat their wives or people who wear burqas. And if you have the U.S. military commander basically saying, I bet those guys beat their wives, not we have evidence, we're going to take them to court, so I'm going to shoot them and it's fun. Think of the message that that kind of sends to the world when you have thou, our Secretary of Defense is a guy who says it's certainly fun to shoot some people, meaning Muslim men in Afghanistan. You have General John Kelly, who is a vicious anti-immigrant uh, closed border advocate who now is going to be in charge of the Department of Homeland Security. Then you have Admiral Mike Rogers, who's going to be running all of the spy operations through the, the DNI. And I could go on for a half hour or more about all of these guys. But I want to end by telling you uh, about Mike Pence. I've been following Mike Pence's career for more than a decade. But he is uh, one of the uh, greatest holy warriors in the eyes of the radical religious right. He has been groomed for many years uh, to be their sort of uh, white horse running in to save the country from vicious secularism uh, and scary atheists and gay people and the list goes on. Mike Pence is a uh, what we call a theoconservative. He is a theological fascist, uh, a Christian supremacist. Well, I called him a Christian jihadist, and boy, did they go nutty over that. And I'm like, you know, because like, you don't know what the word jihad means. Oh, I know what it means. I'm just saying, like, well, when you use it next time, how about you think about the way you're using it? But he is a Christian jihadist. I think we should use the terms that they use for everybody else. Talk about them. These guys are the, uh, you know, they're the American Taliban. They're the Christian jihadists. But what they want is a country that essentially functions as a theocracy on social matters and foreign policy, and then functions as a playground for the ultra-rich and, and the destroyers of the environment uh, on their uh, uh, domestic policies, and their social platform is straight out of the 1300s. And, and, and these guys, Mike Pence and the people that put him there, know what they're doing. I want to see the story of how Trump ended up getting Pence put onto him, because Trump looked like he had to like, you know, leave the room immediately. We come out, he's like, well, there's Mike Pence. I'll see you guys later. Great, great, great. That was not some friend of his. They had only met once before. I'm telling you, Pence is the Trojan horse of this election for the radical religious right. And I think that you know, it's going to be interesting to see who plays the fascist chess game better, Trump or Pence, because Pence is a very dangerous person.